good day. Our lecture would be on fundamentals of good medical writing. This lecture will cover introductions and course agenda, the scope of medical writing, qualities of effective medical writing, the writer's role, assessing your audience and identifying and placing key messages. Course agenda. Usually these are lectures, good medical writing and controlling sentences, study reports for regular submissions, journals, peer review and publications, Presenting different types of clinical evidence. Presenting statistical data for publication. Transparency initiatives. Medical communication. New frontiers in publishing. Tips for using MS Office. Workshops. Presenting at conferences. Writing up clinical trials and tests. All of this would entail skills needing your skill in medical writing. Scope of medical writing. It would include internal and regulatory reports, conference presentations, you have to make an abstract, oral presentations, and posters. You have to read and eventually write journal articles. You would read need to write your original research paper, you would have to review articles, make case reports, and send letters to the editor. What are the qualities of good medical writing? You start with good science. Communalism is a common ownership of scientific discoveries. As to universalism, it's evaluation using universal unbiased criteria. Disinterestedness, scientists should act selflessly. Organized skepticism, ideas tested and subjected to rigorous structured scrutiny by peers. You should plan effectively. The research asks a very specific question and tests a specific hypothesis. Broad questions are usually broken down into smaller testable hypotheses or questions. Often called an objective or aim, though calling it a question tends to help with focusing the hypothesis and thinking about how to find an answer. So for you to have an original research, you must state your question clearly. Do your statistics or get your own statistician. It's important to use your right study design. Apply ap appropriate ethics. Keep an open mind and minimize bias. And make sure who's the investigator author's contributions and agree to publish even if you get negative results. Behave ethically. Research ethics as with the Declaration of Helsinki. Publication ethics. Avoid misconduct so that you protect patients' identities. Report clearly and you have to have informed consent if it's the research any deviation from usual practice, full burden imposed on participants, the risks posed to the participants, and benefits to the participants, patients, and society. So it's not always enough to state that the study was approved by an ethical board or an IRB. Protect patients' confidentiality don't use disguises to anonymize. Remove details, blacken the eyes, alter personal details, false names. So beware of identifiers. Remove all age, sex, location. 
clinical details, test results, institutions, unusual personal story or context, or photo. How to write research papers? So you, there are websites that would also provide tips on how to write research papers. You could look this up. Equator website. So your writing should be clear. Keep it simple. Use short, familiar words. Avoid jargon and acronyms and be specific. Be concrete and say what you mean and mean what you say. Most encountered manuscript problems are the following. Poorly written and the use of excessive jargon. More often than not, we as the medical students and medical practitioners fall into this trap. We, are, we get so used with our everyday terminologies that we fail to identify that this is already medical jargon. Inadequate in an appropriate presentation, so we go back to how we should present our data appropriately. And poor description of design, so poor choice of study design. What is the role of the writer? Who did what and why? So we have our authors, contributors, competing interests, and publication ethics. Authorship. So avoid guest and ghost writers. So authorship credit is based only on substantial contribution to conception and design or data analysis and interpretation drafting the article or revising it critically for important intellectual content, and final approval of the version to be published. So all these conditions must be met. Solely acquiring funding or collecting data does not justify authorship. All authors included on a paper must fulfill the criteria, and no one who fulfills the criteria should be excluded. To be a contributor, it took part in planning, conducting, and reporting the work, including professional medical writers. Guarantors are who accept full responsibility for the work and or the conduct of the study, had access to the data, and controlled the decision to publish. Researchers must decide among themselves the precise nature of each contribution. So who did what? So this is an example from a real paper. Dr. Eberal would be the author and contributors are the following. Competing interests. The evidence of competing interests affect the reporting of research. So a person has a competing interest when he or she as an attribute that is invisible to the reader or editor, but which may affect his or her judgment or writing. Always declare a competing interest, particularly one that would embarrass you if it came out afterwards. Misconduct. Fabrication, making up of data or results and recording or reporting them. Falsification or manipulating research materials, equipment, or processes, or changing or omitting data or results such that the research is not accurately represented in the research record. Plagiarism, the appropriation of another person's ideas, processes, results, or words without giving appropriate credit. Cross-check. So there are web tool searches for overlapping content, either pre-publication or post-publication. You have your specialist search engine and gets behind access controls to search a lot of articles in cross-reference databases. So these are examples. 
So, introductions and course agenda. How will you assess the audience? So, you have to know who you are writing to. So, you could either be have your audience as the regulators, your market, if it's in a conference, in journals, or primary clinicians. So, how do you please editors and peer reviewers? So, make sure the message is clear in the paper and abstract and not just in the cover letter. Also, send extra materials, details of any closely related papers, or any previous peer review reports. It should communicate clearly and promptly. And you have to identify and place key messages. You have to write your introduction, why ask this research question. You have to describe your methodology. You have to discuss your results and discussion. What makes a good research question? So you have your final criteria. Again, remember your feasibility. It must be interesting. It must be novel, ethical, and relevant. The two main problems introduced by multiple analysis are firstly, the increased probability of detecting intervention effects where none exist. So, remember your type 1 error. And secondly, the limited capability of this to detect a true treatment effect in secondary outcomes if not enough participants are enrolled to show a statistically significant difference in these outcomes. Remember your false negatives or your type 2 error. So, a question you don't care about nor does anyone else has no place to be your research question. And when you look at your team clinical data, you try to think of a question. The records may be biased and confounded and may lack information you need to answer your question reliably, hence the need for your research question. It should not be a fishing expedition or data dredging you are gathering lots of information and hoping a question will suddenly emerge. So, statistical analysis of many outcomes post hoc may yield false positives or false negatives owing to the lack of power or type 2 errors. So, for example, the dishonest drug trial. Not transparent because there are sponsors' roles especially if it is made by a drug company. Compare intervention with one known to be inferior with ineffective dose of, of competitor intervention with so much of competitor inter intervention that ADRs are likely. Multiple endpoints and report selectively. Reports results only from favorable centers, only favorable subgroup analysis presents most impressive results such that reduction in relative rather than absolute risk is presented. And it's not only in trials. So usually in papers, it was found that the industry supported systematic reviews were of lower quality than Cochrane reviews of the same drugs. Less transparency was reported, had fewer reservations about limitations, and always recommended the sponsor's drug without reservations. It has also been found that sponsored meta-analysis on anti-hypertensive drugs were not associated with favorable results but had over-generous conclusions. So if it's industry commission reviews, we have to be careful. So your articles greatly create influence. Especially peer review approves the science and the journal brand endorses your message. And it's always better than your standard medical representative. And what's an honest review article? So it describes sources of information and methods of selection. 
Ideally, we cite Cochrane and other systematic reviews. We clarify the type and strength of evidence for key statements and declare provenance, funding, and competing interests. So how can journals help? So you submit offerings and unsolicited reviews and editorials on commercial topics under three questions. Has anyone prompted or paid you to write this article? Or would a professional writer contribute to the article? And would the article be original and would be similar to previous articles submitted? Thank you for listening to this lecture. Please do subscribe to, um, to the PMCH channel for further preventive medicine lectures. Thank you.